From time to time, my viewers ask me about the prices of the yachts that I show on this channel. Actually, usually, if I'm able to disclose the price, I put it in the description in the box below the video. But the yachts I'm gonna show you today, I have no idea of what their prices are, apart from to say that between them, they're most certainly worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Fedship is certainly not a shipyard that you choose to build the biggest possible yacht for the cheapest possible price. The quality of their yachts is legendary. And as such, they do command prices which are right at the top of the range. This is clearly a winning formula for them though, as more and more wealthy yacht owners choose Fedship to build their yachts for them. And in recent weeks, it's incredible how much has been going on there. The first significant piece of news from the shipyard is that the 75 meter fed ship, formerly known as Project 703, has now been christened by her owner with the name Arrow. I have to say that the name does seem to fit the lines of this superyacht that have been penned by British designer Johnny Horsfield from H2 Design in the UK. When a fed ship is delivered, there are a few moments that the press look out for. Very often the construction of the yacht is shrouded in secrecy, so the moment that it comes out of the shed and is seen for the first time, it's great to get photographs and video to see exactly what she looks like. With Fedship though, there's another very special moment as the yacht is transported through the Dutch countryside from Alsmeer to the North Sea, where she shall have her sea trials. Usually a little more information about the yacht becomes available during the sea trial period, depending on how willing the owner of the yacht is to release information about what is in effect a tremendously personal asset. I know that many YouTube viewers can be frustrated by this lack of information, but very often the bigger the yacht, the more private the owner tends to be. And in my opinion, if the yacht is not for sale, then this is quite understandable. There is though a great quote that Fedship related from the owner of this yacht at the christening ceremony, when he said, although I had a 10 foot dinghy as a child, this is actually my first real boat. Personally, I found that quite inspiring. And I have to say that it's some boat to start your yacht ownership career with. And from Project 703, we jump to Project 705, a Fedship masterpiece of almost 73 meters in length. You remember that I said that one of the most exciting moments at Fedship is when the yacht comes out of the shed for the first time. Effectively, this is the launch of the yacht. And although very few details are available about this yacht, we do know that her design is by British design company RWD. She's been built for a repeat client of the yard and she will have a maximum speed of 16 knots. Now though, let's talk about one of Fedship's largest ever yachts that was launched just a few weeks ago. But before we do that, I really must thank you for the amazing level of engagement that I get on this channel. So many great questions and interesting observations. So before I show you the huge fed ship that's about to be delivered, let's take a look at some of your questions. Starting with Badass Garage, who says, the Naveta 33 has been one of my favorites for a long time. What about the 27? Is that no longer in production? Love the new 30. Perfect is a good word for Ferretti. The best in my book, especially the 780 Fly and the 850 Fly and the Veta 33. Thanks, David. Thanks so much for the question, Badass Garage, and thanks as well for being such a long-standing and active viewer of this channel. Actually, the yacht that you're thinking of was the Navetta 28, which is now out of production. It was designed by Zukon, who was the historic designer of Ferretti and of Custom Line. 
And in my opinion, Zukon was a fantastic designer, although the Navetta for me wasn't maybe the best work that he ever did. Now, however, all of Ferretti and Custom Line have been given a facelift with fresh new designs, and the Custom Line Navetta is selling like hot cakes. So you just can't argue with success. The next question was somewhat of a mystery to me, and I'm not even going to try to read it to you. I did, however, put it into Google Translate and found that the viewer in question, apparently drawn by my reported similarity to Vladimir Putin, had watched my video of the wider 165 super yacht and wanted to know how fast the yacht could go and whether the submarine is included. So first of all, the speed. I have to say that the wider 165 is not built particularly for speed, but rather for range. In fact, at nine knots, it has a range of about 5,000 nautical miles. The top speed is 13 knots, which is not that fast, but at 13 knots, you still have a 2,000 nautical mile range. So it depends what you're looking for in a yacht, really. If you're looking for something that's very, very quiet and as environmentally friendly as a yacht can be that you can go almost all over the world in, this is a great yacht to take a look at. With regards to the submarine, it's not included with the price. And as a matter of fact, some people who've been to see the yacht would rather have bought it without the submarine included, feeling that the crane that's used to launch the sub took up too much head height over the swimming pool. Although I should say that's a relatively easy fix just to remove that crane and not have the sub, just use that for extra storage space instead. My opinion is that if you wanted to keep that yacht on the charter market, it would be good to keep the sub. Can you imagine a yacht on the charter market that has a touch and go helipad, an indoor gymnasium, an indoor swimming pool, and a submarine? That would be a pretty attractive proposition. Although it would present some challenges to the crew, of course. And talking of crew, Heather Belmonte asks, those cabin crews I've seen on Aquaholics videos look tiny. Do crew really live in those tiny quarters all year round? Damn you, Aquaholic. It seems there's nothing that you won't do to somehow gatecrash my channel. What is it with these YouTubers that want to be continually featuring in the Yachts for Sale? What? Honestly, it's so frustrating when we have these yacht brokers telling people about how great a super yacht is, that it's amazing quality, but the reality is they don't really know what they're talking about. It's really frustrating. What's that? Oh, well, we're, we're live. What now? So living as a crew member on board a super yacht, I have to admit, isn't for everybody. Uh, personally, I've been doing it now for almost two decades and the longest continuous time that I've lived on board a yacht has been just to over seven years. And that wasn't even on a super yacht, that was on a normal motor yacht, 23 meters in length. And I lived in that boat full time for all those years and I absolutely loved it. I understand from the outside world, people will say, oh, it's such a small space, how do you have privacy? The truth is, you get used to it. It's, for me, it's no longer a, an issue on board. Um, I'm fortunate now that we do, you know, have some, we do have a home on shore uh, for when we get away, because now I'm a bit older. But, you know, important thing is we have air conditioning, we have clean running water, we have heating in the winter, all the laundry is done, all our food's cooked for us, all the food shopping is done. And the hardest thing really is, in some cases, is sharing a cabin. Because if you don't, if you're not compatible with your cabin mate, then it can cause a few problems, which I'm sure you can understand why. But the truth is, what's important is good communication with your cabin mate. Make sure they're aware early if they're doing anything or they have any bad habits that irritate you let them know early so they're aware of it so they can stop it immediately rather than it building up some sort of resentment and anger inside because we do work in a very stressful environment in a very confined space and long hours as well well many thanks to tristan mortlock who of course runs the tremendously successful super yacht captain youtube channel i'd like to feature tristan more often actually so if you do have questions about crew based on any of the videos that I publish, fire away and I'll get Tristan to answer them. 
Now though, time to take a look at one of FedShip's largest ever yachts, the spectacular 99.95 meter super yacht Moonrise. I could talk about the design of this yacht, which is by Studio De Voet. And by the way, I'll put the studio name on screen because viewers from the Netherlands sometimes get so upset about my pronunciation. But actually, rather than talk about her obvious good looks, I'll let you in on some technical details of this yacht that FedShip have disclosed. Superyacht builders are increasingly aware of the need to be environmentally responsible and also to minimize waste. And FedShip has an exhaust gas treatment system on Moonrise, as well as their own proprietary generator exhaust cleaning system. Added to that, there is a heat recovery system on the generators, allowing the water in the jacuzzi to be heated from there rather than wasting electricity. And there's an eco-certified system for the dynamic positioning so that generator energy is saved. Now, dynamic positioning, by the way, is when the yacht remains stationary in the same position, usually using the thrusters so that it's not carried in a certain direction by tides. Now, to my knowledge, Moonrise will be the third largest Fed ship ever built, with Anna being the largest at 110 meters, and then Symphony, the second largest at 101.5 meters. Moonrise at 99.95 meters, just about pips Madame Goo, that's exactly 99 meters, and in my opinion, one of the most gorgeous looking yachts that I've ever seen up close and in the flesh, so to speak. Now, it's incredible to me that such a prestigious yacht builder with such large yachts can be so very busy. But next week, we'll be looking at another highly successful yacht builder, albeit of slightly smaller yachts, when we look at Sunseeker's incredible new Sunseeker 100 model.